there seems to be a lot of, of TV and films lately that kind of dip in and out of genre elements. Um, and I just wonder, you know, what is it about sort of playing with genre and playing with things that aren't, you know, that are sort of based in our reality, but maybe in a heightened reality, help us to explore kind of contemporary issues, you know, but maybe from a different angle. Heather, talk about this and your 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 work as a visual artist. I think, yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm all right with this yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Something yeah. about, I'm a visual artist and I'm a photographer and I make a lot of work about um, reimagining the past. So I find uh, black women from history who've been forgotten or raised and reimagine myself as that character to kind of better understand my present, but also my past. There is something about reimagination, I think in TV mm. and film, which allows you to dream and see a different reality. So maybe that's why people keep coming back to it because right now things are quite, um, in some areas are quite really dreadful and, and feels quite hopeless. But this idea to dream and imagine, but based in this reality, mm. people feel really connected with. So that's why I think that keeps coming up right now for us. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, I'm gonna also say, uh, you know, I love genre. <laughs> And and I think we've got like there's a weird idea which is which is probably quite an Anglo-Saxon Western idea that like literature, real literature, is has to be 100 percent realistic. And then I say, okay, but who wrote about ghosts and witches, Shakespeare? Who wrote about sure. monsters and um, like crazy magic, Homer? You just it's a very sure. weird yeah. idea, and it mm -hmm. and it just. I don't know. I feel like it, that the question shouldn't be why do we? I why do I love that richness? It's why do these other people feel like it always has to be a hundred percent realistic? Um, this is more fun. Let's have some fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely say I just want to have fun. Yeah, I just want to have fun. That's it. <laughs> shall I shall I do mine first? I wrote the book, so I was involved before that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Heather, you can go ahead. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 2019. I was cast in 2019. Uh, so excited. But I remember looking at the project thinking, oh, this is like, this is mad. Like, the show's happening all over the world and things like that. But um, we were really excited. I got cast at the same time with Tunde, who, um, Tahib plays Tunde. So we were going through the process exactly the same. So we'd have a recall and we'd be like, did you hear about, yeah, I heard about, okay, did that. So there was just an, a real excitement about getting this job because we both knew it was really special and we both got it. We were like, yes. And it, we were cast, uh, we did a chemistry together and yeah, cast from 2019, so yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I was um, cast, I was 17 when I got the audition. So 2019, yeah, I, um, saw the audition and literally it was one of my first auditions and I was excited but then I was also nervous because when I read about Ali I was like okay this is cool I'm gonna try it out and I felt really good about the self-tape so when we sent it in my mom she was kind of preparing me for a no because she's been in the industry longer than me but then I kept telling her no mom this is for me I got this I got this role this <laughs> you is told why me that when I met you yes yeah, yeah. yes like, come on. and then literally I think maybe I don't know how long maybe two months later two months later they um called my mom and my mom kept telling me you should call you should call and I was just like okay and then I called them and they said you got the role and my brother and my sister they came in and they tackled me and they were just so happy for me honestly <laughs> it made me so emotional too but it was so much fun it was so much fun and then I went for the um live tape went self live tape and that was even much more cool so that was my whole that's how I got into the power yeah I love it, I love it. we can talk about that all day long <laughs> um so so I grew up in the UK in the 1980s under Margaret Thatcher was prime minister, who was but perhaps perhaps if if you had previously thought that oh if a woman is in charge she is going to be much more compassionate you would have another idea about that after ten years of Margaret Thatcher. Um, my personal experience of women has been that there are wonderful women and there are very horrible women. There are clever oh. women and there are stupid women. There are generous women and there are cruel women and to think that women are particularly like lovely is another kind of sexism i mean one might also say you know in yeah right yeah. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. sorry, you guys speak to that yeah yeah i mean you're totally right on that you have cruel women nice women you know you have different 
you know, types of women. So it just depends on, again, the mental state of somebody's like mine, because I don't know. Like, it's literally what you said was just perfect. Thank you very much. It was just, yeah. Yeah, that's for me. Yeah. I just, yeah. I, I mean, you know, the other thing I say about it is, like, in the UK right now, we have Prime Minister and a Home Secretary who are people of colour, and you would think that that would mean that we would be more friendly towards uh -huh. Uh -huh. immigration. Sure. Sure. And, in yeah. fact, uh, they, ha they, I would say, have come up with quite a negative um a uh, 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 idea and policy about immigration so like just because somebody is d one thing you can't like go oh well they're gonna be great heather what do you reckon i mean a million percent agree i think representation is an assumption that everything will be good just yeah. because you see a lot of visibility doesn't equal to um good human rights and care so i think it's about i think the show's about how power corrupts anybody mm -hmm. regardless of gender so i think it's about how power is distributed and if one group has ultimate power there's a there's an imbalance right right so i think um the conversation is way more nuanced than saying just because people are women they're going to treat people fairly because i think we can all maybe you yourself have had different experiences like that i think um mm -hmm. the conversation is more complex i would say certainly it's yeah certainly in my work i try to stand for the irreducible complexity of the world. It's important. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I yeah, mean... Kind of fascist. <laughs> yeah. 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 And this is not to say that women are any worse, obviously. Like, Absolutely not. Right. Yeah. Right. It's mm -hmm. equal. You don't mm -hmm. have to be better to demand equality. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I think there's something quite weird about saying, well, this group have to be better than the rest of us. Again, we're, we're all the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want everybody to jump in here. Um, yeah. I I really didn't know much about the Roe versus Wade situation because I'm not on social media. But when I heard about it, you know, I feel like I, I just had rage in me, <laughs> really, because, you know, you have somebody else telling what you should do about your body. And then it's just like, well, I mean, it's my body. So honestly, with that whole situation, I'm not that educated on it. But I do know that no government should have the right to say what anybody should do over their body. Right. I don't know. It's just giving me chills even thinking about it. I just it. got chills. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Got um, to make a show that is so um, uh, urgent, I've said this before, but to make a show that is so urgent felt like probably one of the most important, I'm an artist, too, I'm a visual artist, and it felt like one of the most important projects I've ever been a part of because um, people need this and people need hope mm. because because of social media, I've been able to tap into uh, places all over the globe, especially what's happening in Nigeria now politically, mm. and um, people are kind of losing hope, especially some people who identify as women. So to see a different version of how things can be encourages hope, but I also think creates a sort of resilience and resistance mm. for us to all imagine differently. Yeah. And again, not just for women, for everyone, because power in the show, like in real life, affects everybody, right? Mm. So I think it's a it's a really urgent and important show to make. And yeah. mm -hmm. especially that episode in um, Saudi Arabia in five. Oh my gosh, I was yeah. just electrifying, really. Yeah, and my mom, literally, she was like, Haley, I really feel like this pandemic is in some way a blessing because the people need to see this mm. show. So it was good that we like had the pandemic because now within the situation the world is in, when the show comes out, people can look to it and relate to it and just see that, you know, this is hope in a right. way. Right. So there, so there is a thing that happens, and we've seen it many times in the world, where when there is economic uh, downturn or when there are uh, problems, and I mean, the pandemic has, you know, done bad things to the world economy and, and, and in lots yeah. of different ways. Uh, the people who come in for the sharp end of that all over the world are uh, women and girls, are, are young people. Yeah. Um, and... So I think some of this was probably somewhat predictable from the start that, you know, once you have a global pandemic, then there's going to be a pushback somehow against yeah. women. Yeah. Um, I think absolutely, Heather, what you said is 100 percent correct, which is one thing that we can do is to produce images that have hope in them and that even visiting in your imagination a world where things are different, I think is... I mean, that is where everything starts, Absolutely. Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and like, I don't, 
I, f- I feel like we could all talk about that all day is just mm-hmm. to talk about, you know, the inspirational leaders throughout world history who have started by making us imagine it differently. Yeah. And, you know, I like we're, we're all standing on their shoulders and we're all taking inspiration from that and just going, OK, as a as a creative person, you can't always do things that make a difference. But sometimes you have an idea or like you're involved in something and you just go, OK, maybe we can change a conversation here a bit. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think I think I think we're in a dark time in many ways for mm-hmm. uh, yeah for a lot of different vulnerable groups around the world. And so, just to imagine people powerful is exciting and mm-hmm. worth doing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, can I first say I we, I love Tinkler. Um, yeah. So that that's just out of the way. You can answer it later. Mm-hmm. Um, terrified me. Oh, can I do it? I guess um, mm-hmm. I, it's such an incredibly ambitious show. Um, and I really want to do the show justice. Mm-hmm. I read the book and I was like, what? Like, this is, I've just never even imagined that, which is quite sad, but I've never imagined women being that powerful across the globe. So it was the pressure to do the job really well, I guess. And so many of my friends, I all auditioned for this role. So I feel like I'm carrying them on my backs too. <laughs> like, we're doing it for all of you, all the like, dark skinned black actors who were auditioned for this role. I just mm-hmm. want to honor them too mm-hmm. on screen. So that was what terrified me, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I would say what really terrified me were the um lines and how much I had to memorize. <laughs> that's what just terrified me the most. Yeah, the yeah. Um yeah, that's that, I mean honestly that's what terrified me because it was my first role and my first it was huge. It's on a huge platform. Mm. So I think that's what terrified me the most. And I had self-doubt, but I had to keep telling myself that I can do this and I was meant me for this. Thank oh, you. thank you. Yeah, yeah. And that I was right. meant for this. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I mean, these are magnificent performances. <laughs> thank you so much. But yeah, that was the most terrifying part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And how did I feel when I heard Tony Collette was going to be in the show? I think I might have literally stood up and punched the air with excitement. <laughs> I mean, what an incredible actor she is. Just extraordinary. Yeah. All of the performances in this show are so good. You guys are so good. Oh. And yeah, I mean, I think I think Tony as that sort of uh, character who runs through and joins some of the storylines together. You know, she's mm-hmm. like what she sees footage of you mm-hmm. in the show. She's like following what's going on. And so, you know, she's just a riveting actor to watch. But I mean, the truth is you can't take your eyes off anybody. It's it's just great. I feel very lucky is how I feel. <laughs> I was so excited, but the pressure, hey, I was like, (laughs) oh, I have to make sure I do this justice. But I mean, I've got, what was beautiful was during the filming, I had a lot of friends who are, one particular friend, Etanosa Yvonne, she is a photojournalist in Nigeria and she she photographed all of NSARS. So there was conversation I had with loads of people, also people who are Yoruba, people who are Ibo, my character's Ibo. So talking to Ibo people and understanding what that means and the cultural uh, specificity of that. Um, And to see Nigeria, particular Lagos on screen on a mainstream stage, what an honor, like to, for for, for you even thinking about putting Nigeria in the storyline and just allowing this strong Nigerian woman to be on screen, just felt like an honor. So Mm -hmm. a dream it was for me. Well, I mean, in real life, Nigeria has like, I think Nigeria has the largest youth population mm. in the world. Yeah. Oh, wow. So in yeah. terms of youth and uh, the power that the youth has is really palatable all over the world, right? And what was interesting, uh, you know, when Twitter got kind of taken down and how somehow Nigerian youth were able to navigate it out. There were so many sources of inspiration yeah. of powerful Nigerian women. There's a thing called the Feminist Coalition in Nigeria, which... Um, yes which, yeah, I'm sure you know, which was yeah. another source of inspiration for me to kind of tackle into. So your country is rich, uh, rich of culture and knowledge. So I just kind of yeah. tapped into what was around me. So, yeah. Um, the best part about being on this project? Yes. Um, I would say there were so many cool things I got to do. Um, I would say I got to interact with animals that I never thought I've ever interacted with before. <laughs> And then also, I would say the best part was just, um, 
just making friends on and off set, really, because I made friends with Heather so quickly so in quick. The Heeb <laughs> and Emika, yeah. Alili, and then also within Ali's storyline, I made forever friends because I had um, Ali and then v Zaris Angel. I would say that was like the best part. And then for this being my first thing and then being on set, I was totally scared. But then when I met them and when we all connected immediately, it just really comforted me and really really reassured me that everything was going to be okay and that the directors were totally, totally um, cool too. So I would say that was the best part. I would say with it being female dominant, it just made me feel a lot more safe on set. And I felt like even if I like had an idea, I could definitely like tell my like voice out my idea and I knew I wouldn't be shut down immediately. I just felt more safe on set and for it just being my first time, you know, I was anxious, I was scared, I didn't know what to do. But then it just made me feel a lot more safe. They were all like moms to me in a way. So I would say I just felt a lot safe. I just felt really safe. <laughs> Make me feel so happy. <laughs> I'm so glad because obviously I wrote the book and I didn't know it was going to be TV. And then I thought, oh, we have got quite a lot of young people, obviously, who are coming into big roles. So I'm really glad that we made you feel safe. And because God knows we've had some terrible stories about this industry. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, Heather, do you want to speak to that as well? I think the thing which I particularly loved is the diversity of the people who identified as women in the writer's mm -hmm. room. So for my character, Phoebe Okewo mm -hmm. was one of the um, writers of my storyline, a British Nigerian um, woman, and Claire Wilson. And we had chats back and forth. And there was also like a, a common ground. I didn't need to over explain or had to prove myself in any way. That was a kind of a low, there's like a, we understand what you mean. So that just made the creative process really easy. So that was another like, great privilege of being part of this show. Yeah, I'm going to say another thing about this, which is, you know, I was not feeling like, oh, we have to have only uh, female identifying writers, but we just looked for the best writers and that's who it was. So, you know, that's what... I, I mean, this is this is this is <laughs> this it's 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 kind of that's kind of like a joke about what people say about you know how did we end up with an all male panel where we just looked for the best people? It is a joke about, it, but it's also true that we were looking for people who were able to write these characters really well mm -hmm. and who could really understand the storyline. And you know, we ended up with a with an all female writers room, and that was great. And uh, yeah, we had we had a really good time. Mm -hmm.